Welcome to this CAM tutorial on Managing Data Models, Components, SQL Tables, and Hibernate Java Persistence API. So we're going to introduce you to the concepts and practice here of using CAM and CAM templates in the context of uh, your information persistence layer and models. So the agenda today is the data management concepts themselves. What is it exactly we're looking to achieve and how are we doing that? What is the semantic content? How are these templates working? What is the, the naming and design rules? How are they applicable? And what analytic reports are available? And then once we understand the concepts, we move on to actually delivering the persistence components uh, how to use the renamer tools, generating Hibernate JPA, and uh, these uh, CDTs, which are a flavor of Hibernate JPA, and exporting to SQL tables. And then wrapping up with the documentation and reports that are available, how to view models and generate the reports. And then the last segment is actual demonstration using the CAM editor. So we're essentially doing this in two parts. The first part here is slideware, uh, so that you can understand the landscape and how all the moving parts are interacting. And then we actually show you it uh, using the editor. So the first uh, part is, uh, what does it mean to do data management? What is the life cycle? How do these templates play in? And what are the semantics involved? So we're looking here at a typical data management lifecycle where you have source systems. Uh, you want to reverse engineer those using the drag and drop builder that's part of the CAM editor. And then once you've reverse engineered those components, you want to be able to manage them uh, within the uh, editor environment. And of course, be able to generate from that the actual target uh, components, uh, the Hibernate, the entity definitions for the SQL tables, models and documentation, and also uh, the components that uh, are involved from those source systems, being able to store those in a dictionary. So that's the overall life cycle. Uh, now we move to the semantics uh, and how this is achieved. So. If we look at the overall landscape uh, for information and processes, uh, it can be summarized uh, as this diagram here. And what most people are familiar with is the three across the middle here, the, the structure of the information, the content model of the components, and then any annotations and definitions uh, associated with those. That's how XSD schema works. In addition, you have uh, business rules about the structure components and then the uh, data model. And so what we're looking to achieve is to use the CAM template to manage all of these uh, five uh, pieces. And so if we move to the template itself, we can see uh, it's composed of the structure the rules and the documentation. So we have those three semantic pieces in play. We're able to connect to SQL sources from the CAM editor uh, from the, of the source systems. So we can store that as XML. Uh, CAM itself is obviously the content assembly mechanism and OASIS standard. It's uh, WYSIWYG, simple XML. Uh, the pieces are easily parsed and programmatically handled uh, because we have separated out the structure rules and definitions. And so you're able to use your familiar XML tools in this environment. Nevertheless, obviously we want to show you uh, how this all works. Um, and so the next piece that we need to understand are the naming and design rules. So it's not enough to just pull components uh, from your source systems uh, or your schemas or even create new components yourself without following 
uh, consistent naming and design rules. And so Cam uh, is able to coach and uh, uh, do this with you. And so essentially, what, whatever component uh, you're considering, uh, there's three pieces. There's the item itself, the name, there's the context it's being used in, and then there's this thing called the representation term. So how does this all work? Well, we can look at an example. So if we take person, and person name. So the item is person. The components are the various pieces of the name. Uh, and then the context is the uh, actual uh, piece within uh, that. So things like language. Uh, but it's not enough to say language, uh, because then you have to ask yourself the question, what? Uh, and so the answer to that is then you need to associate a term. And there's a set list of these, and Cam will check for these. And so in this case, we're using language code to denote uh, the language that the person uh, uses. And then obviously things like verify details, previous name, those are Booleans, um, and so on. So the idea is that all the components that you are utilizing uh, within your CAM template conform to these naming and design rules. And to help you with this, we have uh, automated naming and design rule analytics. This is uh, a, the template evaluation report that you can run. It will show you uh, how well you're doing. Uh, as you can see here, it, it flags things that don't uh, pass the representation term rules, it flags things that are missing uh, definitions, and so on. There's a raft of other checks that it makes, and there's a separate uh, tutorial uh, on that if you uh, want to dig into that. But for now, uh, obviously the goal is just to get a score of 10 uh, for the components. So let's have a look at the next piece. So once uh, you've got your components, uh, you've analyzed them using the uh, uh, naming design rules, you've arrived to this point where uh, you've got consistent components, you're avoiding duplication, and you're enhancing reuse uh, because now you can build dictionaries of these components that are searchable. So you can find out where in your various tables uh, you're using uh, things and, and make sure that they're defined the same way. And the template then is acting as the documentation of your information model. Uh, you can share this with your partners very easily. Um, you, there's a tool that allows you to compare between templates and dictionaries, so you can align to domain vocabularies. Um, but once you've put all this investment in, then you want to be able to go from uh, this model semantic view to the actual components themselves. So the next section we're going to have a look at, this persistence uh, component delivery and the functionality the editor provides you with. So we've seen that the life cycle here is uh, we have the source systems, we can uh, reverse engineer and manage our components um, using the uh, IDE. So that then the next piece of the puzzle is how does the renamer play into this? Well, the renamer uh, helps you align to the naming design rules. So it will automatically uh, expand abbreviations, uh, create uppercase camel names, um, and fix a whole bunch of invalid characters and um, bad practices uh, that it may encounter. So. When you're using the renamer in the drag and drop mode, uh, you simply uh, toggle uh, the, the drag and drop tool into designer mode as you're viewing the, the SQL tables in the existing um, uh, application systems, drag them ac across into the CAM template and it will automatically run the naming design, uh, naming design rules for you. Um, and then the second mode 
is the reverse. So you've got a uh, CAM template that you've either created from scratch or uh, you've imported from an existing schema. And now what you want to do is create uh, SQL database mappings. So you want the uh, mapping, uh, the naming and design rule mapper to go the other way around and to create uppercase underscore uh, typical SQL DB naming uh, conventions from those uh, uppercase camel XML uh, names. So you can use the naming tool uh, in two modes to help you align what's going on in with your template with your SQL databases. So um, this is showing you uh, that first where you're going to import the SQL definitions. So you can see on the right hand side, uh, we're using the database browser that's part of the CAM editor. Uh, we have it toggled into designer mode and we can pick the tables uh, and this is using a JDBC connection uh, through to your uh, existing source systems. And on the left hand side you can see that the uh, uppercase underscore SQL names have been converted to uh, naming design rule conformant uh, uppercase camel. And um, once you have that, you're then in a position to uh, generate your target format. So you want Hibernate, uh, you can go ahead and, and create additional SQL tables. So if you make changes in here, you can then generate new SQL tables and so on. And as you can see here, you can have multiple tables inside the CAM template, so you can manage uh, your application that way. And next, we're looking at the detail of actually creating the Hibernate JPA. So from the export menu, we're exporting the template as an XSD schema. We're picking the Hibernate JPA option. So that will generate a full uh, Hibernate JPA uh, schema. The other alternative is if you're using a tool like uh, uh, Appian, uh, and you want to generate their CDT, which is a, a, a flavor of uh, Hibernate. You can go into the ref field in the uh, CAM template and uh, insert appian.jpa, which will tell the process that that's the uh, specific dialect that you want it generated. And the ID field uh, should conform to the uh, data store name uh, that you're using uh, along with the uh, SQL tables. And so that's it. And you hit export, uh, it will uh, generate the uh, Hibernate JPA for you or the CDT. And of course, uh, in this example, we imported in uh, an XSD structure and we're using it that way. So, um, the next piece of it is uh, you going the reverse. So we've got an existing uh, XSD, and so we have those uppercase camel names, and now we want to use the DB mapper. Uh, so you go under tools, renamer, this menu pops up, you select SQL DB mapping, uh, click OK, and uh, you will see uh, the, uh, the result where those uh, SQL table mappings are added to your uh, CAM template, and then you can simply run the export, which is the next piece. So in, in order to run the export, you're going to go under File, Export, uh, Template as a model this time, uh, we're going to be uh, enhancing that in future releases of the editor to have a specific export for uh, SQL. But right now, it's under the model export, and you'll pick the MySQL DDL uh, option. And you can see here uh, that we've gone from the uh, CAM template to uh, the generated SQL. And in this case, we didn't run the renamer, so we've got uh, uppercase camel names uh, in the uh, 
MySQL. So you can see you can use it both ways. Um, now, next piece. Once you've uh, consolidated and uh, uh, built out the uh, tables that you want as uh, in your CAM template, so you'll notice here uh, we have a whole set of tables and the root element, by the way, uh, should be the database name that you want overall. Uh, so you can uh, inside the CAM template, we have uh, that uh, database and then each of the tables uh, underneath that. And now you can go in and create using the tools, dictionaries, create dictionary uh, option here, and it will build that complete dictionary for you. Again, there's a separate uh, tutorial on dictionary handling, so I'm not going to go into all that detail and how you can then uh, uh, set up that dictionary using the editor and, and reuse those components and search them and everything else that's uh, handled elsewhere. But the bottom line is now you're able to decouple those source systems um, because we can generate for you Hibernate and SQL. Uh, you're now uh, not tied to a particular back-end database technology. You, you have flexibility in, in uh, how you can uh, uh, deploy your persistence layer. Okay, uh, the next piece is uh, documentation and models. So again, you've got your dictionaries, you've created your SQL, you've created your Hibernate, and now you want some documentation. And so you have the uh, ability to view the tabular documentation. So uh, from the CAM editor, uh, you'll see view uh, tabular documentation. Click on that uh, and it will generate a HTML report for you. We're going to see an example in a moment. Uh, you can also build uh, UML models uh, using the e file export template as a model. Um, and you can create uh, visual mind map doc diagrams if you're using uh, FreeMind or a similar uh, uh, mind map viewer. And again, uh, there's a separate tutorial on doing all that. The quality assessment report's really important. Uh, that will analyze your dictionary components. And again, flag duplicates, misnamed inconsistencies, uh, things like uh, if it says it's a date in the name, but it's defined as an integer uh, and so on. Uh, so that helps you uh, get uh, a clean uh, and robust data model. Here's the examples of the uh, uh, my map viewing, uh, so you can see here we've got each of the tables. Uh, then uh, in green, we have the uppercase uh, camel uh, uh, XML component. And then in brown, we have the schema table uh, and column uh, definition uh, laid out. And, and, and again, the same information is in the tabular documentation. It's a different layout. And this is designed uh, for your uh, data analyst to be able to just read. It's in plain English, uh, so there's no code in there, uh, and they can just review it uh, for consistency and conformance. So that's it for the slideware. Uh, now we're going to walk you through the actual demonstration itself and show you this working. Welcome to part two here, the uh, demonstration. So uh, here we're going to run the CAM editor and uh, this is running under Ubuntu. So I'm just going to launch the editor here. And so now we're in the IDE. And the first thing that we need to do is create a new template. We're going to uh, give it a name here. And remember, this is the database name. Uh, so this is sample database. And so now we have to save this. So I'm going to just push it into the temp. Uh, demo DB. OK. And here we have the root element for our sample database. Uh, 
so now the next thing uh, that you want to do is go ahead and change the ID here uh, to something that uh, matches the data stores that you're using. So I'm going to use uh, cam underscore db. And then this reference ID, uh, if you're going to be uh, creating other than a Hibernate uh, JPA, so if you want to create an Appian style JPA, you're going to put that there in the reference field. And then you can just go ahead and save that. And so now we need to add in our um, actual database tables. So for this, we're going to go over here to the database browser, uh, click on the connector, and select our existing uh, database connection. Obviously, if you don't have one, you're going to use the manage to set one up. So uh, connect to my uh, data store here, and here I have cam underscore tb. And I can navigate in, I can see my tables, and the one I'm going to use here for the demonstration is the uh, agreement table. So you can see we have uppercase um, uh, underscore uh, SQL names and fields with a whole bunch of types. So the next thing I need to do is uh, switch from mapping mode to designer mode. So now I'm in database designer mode. I can select the table and drag it and drop it over here. And now the <coughs> DB renamer ran. And you can see that from the SQL uh, names, we now have uh, camel case upper uh, uh, names and you can see that abbreviations have been uh, expanded and so forth and so the other piece of the puzzle is that you can see these little gray dots when you can see those it's telling you that there is a database mapping so if I right click on this and do edit annotation I can see here is my database mapping from the store, table, and column. So we have the round trip relationship uh, in there. And you can also notice that if I look at <coughs> this field, we have, in addition to the DB mapping, we have a key ref as well. And so that's telling us that uh, this field is an ID field. <coughs> and uh, we can see that uh, the little ID symbol, uh, the, uh, the key ref symbol, is showing uh, in the user interface as well. And so uh, some additional things we might want to uh, uh, review now. You notice that the definition for insurance year uh, in the database is integer. So in fact, we know that is really uh, four digits uh, numeric. So if we click on item rules, um, we can see that uh, the default <coughs> rule was added here. And we can edit this rule. And so what we want to do is change that, and we want four, uh, a little bit, four numeric digits and not allowing uh, trailing zeros. And we can go ahead and do the same thing for uh, this field as well. And so on. So... Uh, that's showing you using the <coughs> rule editor wizard. You can also see down here that the rules <coughs> are um, catalogued. And you can see 
that the lengths have been correctly uh, brought over from the uh, existing SQL definition as well. And then here we have a date field uh, and whether the uh, field is optional or required. So all those rules uh, are part of uh, the template. So again, we can go ahead and uh, save that now. Uh, and if you wanted to add an additional rule, uh, there's actually the add rule dialog here. Uh, and the rule shortcut uh, to make things optional uh, here as well. Um, so uh, you can quickly uh, control uh, what you're doing. So uh, <coughs> let's assume that we want to add a new field to this um, definition. So we go to the table uh, element, uh, right click, and we have add child element. So what's missing is the agreement value. And remember, we're using the naming and design rules, so um, that should conform. And we want a decimal field. Uh, we're going to put an annotation in. This is the total value of the agreement. Okay. And so now you'll see that this has been placed at the bottom. And what we want to use is the uh, move element. Uh, click on that. Click on that again. And now we have this here. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is edit the annotations. And we want to add a new annotation, a custom one, and just say that this was added. The other uh, thing that you can put in is changed, if you change the definition. So this is new element. Finish. Now, uh, save the template again. Uh, the other thing that you notice is there's not a gray dot on this uh, field because we don't have the DB mapping. So uh, this would apply as well if you had a new uh, schema that you didn't have an existing SQL table for. Uh, so what you saw before was when we used the drag and drop, the renamer added the, um, uh, uh, created the names for all these components based off the SQL name and added the DB mappings in. Now we want to go the other way around. We created a new element, so we want to run tools, renamer renamer mode is sql db mapping and now we're going to add a db mapping for that uh, component so we can click ok uh, reload that uh, store it in temp and now you can see that if we uh, edit this you can see that the DB mapping has been added. And so uh, we, we have that as well now. Uh, and you can see that it cre uh, created the SQL underscore uppercase uh, convention. So now we can save the template. And so the next step, now we have our uh, database, is we want to go ahead and export this. Uh, we're going to pick the template as a model, so we don't yet have uh, an explicit uh, SQL uh, menu option. Go into output format, and we'll see MySQL DDL, and click OK. Uh, that's being placed in the temp folder. And so if we navigate to the temp folder, here we can see our files. We can open this with uh, the editor. And you can see uh, we've created uh, all these tables with the uh, correct lengths, uh, definitions, and so on. And because we added uh, that uh, annotation, it also created the alter table. 
So that's important if you're not creating tables from scratch uh, and you want to have the uh, updates uh, only uh, to the tables. So you have that capability to control that uh, as it's generating the SQL. Okay, let's uh, nav back, navigate back to uh, the editor here. And so now we've created the SQL script. You could run that in uh, the MySQL developer. It would add that database and so on. Uh, the next piece that you need is the Hibernate. Uh, sorry, I clicked that wrong. Uh, the Hibernate uh, schema. So we're going to select export template as an XSD schema. Come down here. Uh, click on mode and we have the hibernate JPA mode here and simply click OK. That's been written to the selected di directory so again we'll go to temp and we can see we have our tempdb.xsd generated here. Open that in the editor and now we're looking at the Hibernate binding. And uh, so we can see that we have the uh, uh, keys columns uh, uh, denoted. We can see that we have the uh, lengths and so on. Uh, this is varcar 35, this is varcar 65. Uh, so we have complete control here over uh, what's happening through the Hibernate to match what we've defined in the uh, SQL, including the column names and everything else. So we have the SQL and we have the matching Hibernate binding. Okay, so if we switch back now uh, to the editor, uh, we can run the evaluate tool and see how we've done in terms of the naming and design rules. Oops, I missed this step out. Uh, this would be preferable to do this before you do the generation, but of course you can just cycle through. Um, so what we can see here is that the components that I uh, extracted from the SQL table didn't have any comment annotations on them, so it's asking us to add those descriptions. Uh, it's also checked some interoperability uh, uh, factors, and it's noted that you're using a code, but you didn't provide any uh, code values. So, uh, and then it allows you to be able to do a spell check uh, down here by breaking out the uh, component names. So uh, that's that uh, report. And obviously you can choose to fix uh, what you want to uh, out of that or just um, take it uh, as, as is, as you have it, your choice. Uh, similarly, uh, dictionaries, you can go ahead and create the dictionary. Uh, simply click OK and your dictionary is generated. Again, there's a whole tutorial on using dictionaries, so I'm got, not going to dig into that detail. Uh, the next uh, piece that you may want to do is uh, view the tabular documentation. So running that option from the view uh, menu, you can see we generate this nice report. Uh, we have all the DB mapping information. We have that this is a numeric format, uh, 999 for the reinsurance year, uh, and so on. So this is something that your uh, data analysts uh, can easily review and uh, check that this conforms to what they want. Again, uh, viewing the template as a mind map. Uh, now we're looking at the model view. If we click that, you have to download and configure the FreeMind uh, editor uh, separately. Again, we have the details on that uh, on the uh, wiki site. And this is what you'll get. So we have the table here. We have the components. The question mark tells you it's optional. Um, the uh, bar tells you that there's a, a, a restriction on the content, in this case value, 
uh, and you can see it's also put this one in green uh, because it spotted that we've uh, said that that was something we added. Uh, and then you have the database uh, uh, mapping there. And if we uh, click on the little minus symbol, uh, go here, uh, click on the little minus symbol, uh, it will remove those and just show you the uh, components. So you have the ability to use this tool to save PDFs, uh, JPEGs, uh, share documentation, etc., uh, with your uh, data analysts. We can click that. And so uh, that, I believe, concludes uh, what we need to show you uh, in terms of using CAM here, uh, the editor tools, uh, to manage uh, your uh, database definitions, be able to round trip through uh, generating MySQL and the matching Hibernate uh, JPA uh, definitions, and then utilize those. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial.